In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit a YouTube video from beginning to end fast in Premiere Pro. So let's get straight into it. So the first step before we would even get into editing is to keep your stuff organized. So as you can see in this folder, I have this video that I want to edit. Um, I have a separate Ford folder for all the B-roll for the video. I have a separate folder for the main footage. I have a separate folder for music and sound effects, um, a, you know, an animation that I want to add to it and also the lot that I want to use to color my footage. Now that I have all this organized, I can go ahead and start a new project in Premiere Pro. I'm going to create the project and then as you can see I have my new project opened. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, just simply import the footage that I have and I'm just going to drag and drop it here into my library and then I'm going to create a new bin and I'm going to name that b-roll uh, just so I stay organized throughout my editing process and now I can just go ahead and drag and drop all these clips into that b-roll folder. As you can see, I have all my footage now here. And uh, what I recommend doing is uh, if you are not super, you know, a technical person, you don't know that much about different resolutions, frame rates and so on. I recommend just dragging and dropping the main clip that you are trying to, you know, optimize the whole video around onto your timeline, because then it's automatically going to create a new sequence for you with those exact settings. Now, if you do know like what your resolution was and frame rate and so on, you can just go ahead, right click here, uh, click on new item uh, sequence and set up your uh, exact settings here but in this case I'm just gonna drag and drop my a roll clip onto the timeline and it's already set up my timeline to the exact settings of my main clip that I'm trying to edit everything around step two begins by basically cutting out all the spaces and uh, just cutting down my main footage that I'm trying to edit in this case so what I'm gonna do is make the video track one and the audio track one a bit bigger so I can see uh, both my sound waves properly and my clip and a quick tip for all of you guys who are editing uh, YouTube videos is you can you want to do like a clap in the beginning so you know when your clip actually starts and uh, you're gonna be able to see that here in the waveform and another thing is you can uh, by simply you know cutting out the uh, spots where there is no audio on the audio track uh, you can speed up your editing workflow uh, workflow a lot as well because you don't have to listen to it like over and over again and find uh, which parts you want to cut out and which ones you don't so basically I'm just gonna start you know listening to this and then wherever I start the footage I'm gonna uh, you know cut the cut the video by pressing C on my keyboard and cutting it and then I'm gonna you know delete the parts which I don't want to use and then you can click on the empty spot click delete on your keyboard and then it's gonna get rid of the dead space on your timeline so just gonna listen through it go through the whole video cut out the parts that I don't want in there and then continue from there now if you want to uh, edit a bit faster and you want to speed up your uh, playback speed you can you know start the footage and then press L on your keyboard and then it's gonna start playing at double uh, speed And if you press L uh, two times, then it's going to speed up your playback speed even more. So if you're just trying to quickly scroll through a uh, talking cat part um, and making sure there are no mistakes in it, just click it double and uh, you're still going to be able to mostly hear what you're saying, uh, but you can go through the footage a lot faster. All right, so as you can see, I just made all these cuts and took out the parts where I'm maybe taking a breather or I messed up and I need to do a retake. Um, so I only have what I want to have in my final video. And uh, basically now what I'm gonna do is add um, some B-roll on top of that that I shot. So, you know, anything I'm talking about that I want to also demonstrate on top of that, uh, maybe take some stock footage as well. I can now just add on top of it. Uh, very, very simple. All you need to do uh, for that is to go ahead and drag and drop your b-roll footage on top of your existing one and then if you don't want to use the sound from the b-roll what you can do is right click on it and then click on unlink and then basically you can just go ahead and delete the audio track from it and now I just have uh, this b-roll right here now if you want to change the speed of um, your b-roll now in this case this is only a 24 frames per second video so I shouldn't really change the speed of that but here's a video that's 100 uh, frames per second so I can slow this down uh, real nice so all you want to do to slow it down or speed it up is to right click on it and then you want to go to speed slash duration 
and then you can set the speed here. For example, if I wanted this at 30%, uh, then I can just put that in there. And as you can see, now I have um, this nice slow motion uh, for the footage. Also, the way I look through my B-roll clips usually is by going here into the source file. And then here, as you can see, we have this little preview window. Uh, and then here I like to, you know, go to the part where I want the clip to begin. And then I click I on my keyboard to set the in point. And then I go to where I want it to finish. For example, here I click O on my keyboard and then I can just go and drag and drop this uh, on my timeline. See, now I have this nice um, B-roll here with uh, exactly the part of the b-roll that i want so i don't have to go and cut it out manually now i'm also going to show you how to add some very simple like subscribe animations and stuff like that to your footage so if you download some uh, green screen background animations like this one actually i'm going to take the sound off of this because I, I i don't really like it um, so i'm going to unlink it and then delete the sound of it now i'm going to go to my effects tab and then you want to search up color key and then apply that to uh, the footage that you have. Then you want to click on that, go to effect controls, and then you want to click on this uh, little thing. And once you have done that and uh, selected the color of the green screen, um, then you want to go to color tolerance and put it up to 100 or whatever makes your you know animation look good. And then you can go ahead, reposition it to where you want it to be. Actually, I'm gonna make the uh, color tolerance a bit higher, like 130. Um, to make sure there is not much, you know, green screen showing in the back. And um, then I'm actually going to add a drop shadow to it as well, because I quite like that look added to that. Um, and then I'm going to change the distance of the drop shadow a bit. I'm going to change the softness of it so it's nice and soft. And as you can see, I have just added this uh, nice subscribe animation to my video. Simple as that. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it, right? Now that I've added uh, some B-roll, some animations to my footage, the next thing I'm going to do is add music and sound effects to it. So I like to get all my background music from Epidemic Sound, and they were actually kind enough to sponsor this video. If you're looking for a solution to get all your music from without getting copyrighted or flagged on your videos, Epidemic Sound might just be the right option for you. At this point, I have been using them for over four years on my personal videos and also my client projects. And they basically allow you to save a bunch of money by paying a monthly low subscription fee instead of having to license songs one by one, potentially even costing you thousands of dollars. They have a huge library of professionally produced songs and amazing sound effects. In fact, they have over 30,000 songs and 90,000 sound effects in their library. And the best part is they keep on adding new tracks and sound effects to it every single week. The music is neatly organized into different genres, libraries, and collections, so you can find the exact song that will fit the mood of the video that you are trying to create. One of my favorite features is the stem downloads, where you can actually download the different layers of each song, so it gives you even more creative freedom when it comes to creating your project. Now, if you sign up with the link in the description below, you get a free 30-day trial of Epidemic Sound, so you can try it out on all your YouTube videos and projects, and look, even even if you decide not to move forward after the 30 day trial, you still won't get flagged on all the videos that you created and uploaded to your YouTube channel during that free trial period. So there's really no risk and no reason not to try it out for yourself. So click the link in the description below and thank you so much Epidemic for sponsoring this video. So here are the couple songs that I chose uh, to put in the background of this video. I'm going to, you know, add that down there. And then uh, once I've done that, I'm going to change the volume of it because right now it's just way too loud uh, to be background music. So you can go ahead and click on this little line here and uh, drag it down. Uh, I like to keep it right around minus 30, minus 28 decibels. Um, that sounds right to me. And I do this to all the different songs that I have in the background. If you don't want to do it manually, you can just go ahead, uh, click Ctrl C or Command C on your uh, music that you want to copy the settings from. Make sure you have the volume selected. And then you can go and click on the other song that you want to paste the volume of that song to. And then click Shift Control. Uh, v and now you have pasted that setting over to it and you didn't have to manually adjust it to that exact volume okay so at this point i uh, usually add some more texts and maybe even some motion uh, templates to it so uh, what i'm gonna do is go to window workspaces and i like to go uh, to the graphics tab um, because here the essential graphics you know panel is set up uh, pretty perfectly so as you can see 
even uh, Premiere uh, on its own has some pretty cool uh, like templates, text templates that you can just copy and paste on your uh, footage. So I'm gonna drag and drop this one, for example. And then uh, as you can see, I can change the exact text on it. So I'm gonna put in um, my camera setup because that's what I'm talking about in this clip. And um, you can even, now I have this cool um, text that pops up. And um, you know, I would add a bunch of different titles throughout my video, uh, maybe indicating some of the sections of it to break it down and make it easy for the viewer to see, you know, in which part I'm talking about what. Graphics templates are a great way to add like animations, text animations to your footage really fast. Uh, but you know, if you want to go ahead and uh, add just a simple text to your footage, you can just click T on your keyboard to get the text tool um, and then click on your screen, um, add in whatever text you want to add. You can go ahead and you know change the font. You can change all the different settings of it here in the essential graphics tab, put it where you want to in the screen and uh, you, know, you can change the duration of it by dragging it uh, and so on. So there are a lot of ways to you know play around with text and different graphics in Premiere Pro. Um, and I think it's quite like an easy and fast way to make your footage and videos more engaging. Once I have added all the different elements uh, in terms of A-roll, B-roll, uh, text animations, you know, music and so on, the last thing I do in my editing process is the color grading. Uh, I like to leave this last. So uh, the way I personally do my color grading, and I think this is like the, the fastest way to, uh, you know, color your footage is to right click, uh, click on new item, create a new adjustment layer and then make sure that you know matches the size of your sequence and then you click OK and then you want to drag that uh, on video um, track whatever is on top so for me it's gonna be video track 3 and then you want to drag it out across uh, all the footage that you want it to affect so all the footage that you want to have the coloring and even color correction on if you are shooting in like log format or something like that where the picture profile is really flat um, you know just pull it out across all of it and then you can go ahead uh, click on it. I'm going to change back my view uh, by going to window and uh, color because this is the one I like to use for coloring and then here I can go ahead and input my own lot or I can actually do my color grading here. Now I'm not going to do any color correcting because I didn't shoot this video with a flat profile it's already exposed uh, pretty well. So basically for all of those uh, who don't know color grading is when you are actually trying to create a certain look on your footage and color correcting is when you are just trying to make your footage you know well exposed and uh, and look normal kind of like what you would see with your own eyes um, again I didn't shoot this video with a log profile or like a flat picture profile with my camera so I'm not gonna do that I'm just going to apply a simple color grade to it now the lot that I personally like to use is this Aspen lot. Um, I personally use it on almost all my videos. I like the look of it. Uh, I'm going to change the in intensity of it um, because I think it's just coming up way too strong. So the way I do that is I click on the adjustment layer, I go to opacity and I can just bring that down. I'm gonna leave it at 25% for this one. Uh, and I'm gonna do still a little bit of, you know, adjustment to it just to make it look a bit nicer. I'm gonna go ahead, add a bit more exposure to it. I'm gonna bring down the highlights a bit. I'm gonna bring down the shadows a little bit as well. I'm going to add just a slight S curve um, in the curves to give it some more contrast. And as you can see, I basically did like a pretty good color correction. I mean, obviously it's nothing crazy. I just wanna show you guys how you can do like a simple edit to it. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this is the before and after of my color grading. I'm happy with this. Um, it's gonna be good for YouTube. Uh, you know, we are not doing any Hollywood production right here. And um, yeah, feel free to look around and find some lots that you really like. I think they are an amazing way to color grade your footage fast without having to spend hours 
hours on you know changing every little thing uh, especially if you are just a hobbyist like you're a beginner and you just want to edit some nice youtube videos but don't want to you know learn how to do all the nitty-gritty of color grading then you know lots work perfectly in my opinion and uh, yeah basically after i did all this i uh, you know cut up my footage cut out all the access i uh, added b-roll to it i uh, added sound effects to it i added some animations some texts um, i added music to it i uh, color graded it um, sometimes i like to do some in and out zooms on my footage to give it some more dynamics uh, especially if it's a sit down video like this one if you uh, you know want to emphasize some points when you are talking you can go ahead and you know make a cut where you want to make the zoom in and then make another cut when you want it to go back to normal um, then you want to select the uh, or highlight the part that you want to zoom in on then you go to position scale at the effect control tab um, you can put in maybe 120 and uh, basically as you can see now I created this effect where it's like close up and then goes back out um, and so on so you know I, I like to do this throughout the whole video if I want to make it a bit more engaging but basically after I did all this I'm pretty much done all I need to do after this is to export my footage so what I like to do is go uh, to right to the beginning of my uh, timeline uh, where I want the video to begin I click I on my keyboard and then I go right at the end where I want it to end and then I click O on my keyboard then I go right here to file I click on export media and then uh, you can change the file name you can change where you want it to save um, and uh, all the different settings of it um, and uh, yeah right here I'm just gonna leave it at full HD 25 frames per second uh, for the audio I'm gonna leave it at that and then after this I'm just gonna click on export and as you can see it's exporting my footage and after this it's ready to upload to YouTube so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it insightful if you want to see more content similar to this uh, then make sure to subscribe to my channel for more and I will see you guys in the next one